Hi, my name is Lisa Ann Watkins. I'm the artist behind Animal Art by Law, and today I just want to introduce you to my new set of Pampa styles, which has been designed um, specifically for creating underpaintings or working into your portraits when you're creating animal art. So over the years, when I've started since I found these amazing products, Pampa pastels, um, I, the question I get asked the most is which colours do I use the most in my work? Now I use them in a variety of ways and I'll show you later in the video some of the um, portraits that I've created using different methods. Um, today I'm going to do a little demonstration for you showing how I would create an underpainting using the range um, that we've put together with Pampa Style. Um, so I can use them for underpainting uh, and I combine that with my colour pencil work, sometimes with pastel pencil work, but mainly I'm a colour pencil artist and this allows me to create um, a nice loose underpainting full of vibrancy and colour that gives extra depth to my work instantly. Um, and then you can go in, it also helps create softness, so if you want to create soft fluffy fur, Pan Pastels are an amazing product to use to get you there quicker. So I use them as an un underpainting, I use them as an overpainting, in other words I can go back in and use some of my colours, so even my darks, midtones, and my lights, just dabbed in at the end over the top of my pencil work to give some bright highlights and bright vividness look to the colour. And also I use it as a softener, so I'll use it in between layers over my colour pencil work and I will use it to soften, soften and blend and again I'll show you some of the works later in the video um, of where I've done that process. So this is the set, um, so it's Animal Art with Lisa Ann Watkins um, and it is, it's literally there's a couple of pictures on there which I'll show you later on in the video, there's a wolf that I did on pastel mat um, combining Pampa style underpainting with colour pencils and also using it as a softener in between layers and as a brightener at the end. Um, there's a cat as well which I'll show you a clip of and that one was on Colour Fix Smooth and again on the Colour Fix Smooth you can use your erasing tools and your indentation tools to take away the paper style. It erases beautifully as well. So this is the range of colours um, and in here there is a set out there already, so if you are an accomplished artist who is confident in mixing your colours consistently, then that is probably the set for you. This is a set that I've put together, um, and what I've done is I've concentrated on the underpainting colours that I use mostly in my animal or portraits when I use pencils, or any materials, watercolours, paints, different things. Now, the whole point of this is someone will say, well, you know, you could mix that blue, or you could mix <laughs> that red, you know, that, that, that colour, that hue, that value. But this is more for beginners, or those that just want consistency to their colour application. So we've got a mix in here of um, colours, pure colours, um, tints and also shades. Now, shades and extra dark basically is where black has been added to the pure tint. Um, and the tints are where white has been added. Now, so you could have took um, we have got a red iron oxide shade in here, so you could have actually taken the red iron oxide and added a touch of black, but for consistency, if you're not confident in mixing those shades, then this one will give you obviously the same shade of the red iron oxide every time you use it, whereas if you just got the red iron oxide and a black and you were trying to mix it and trying to match and you weren't confident, that's where the inconsistency would would kick in. So along with the actual palette of 10 colours, shades, hues, tints, <laughs> um, you also get um, two of the soft tool knives, so we've gone for the rounded and the oval, and you also get a couple of the bigger sponges, um, again for working slightly bigger areas of colour, um, and you get a couple of replacement covers for your soft tools. So what I'm going to do now is a quick demonstration just showing how I would use this as an underpainting to one of my pieces and then I'll show you some of my finished pieces at the end. Uh, but this is just one quick tutorial video to introduce you to the new set and I will be doing more over the coming months and they will be listing up with links up on the Pan Pastel site. Okay so thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoy the demo in a second. Okay, so 
I've got a little line drawing in here of a black spaniel. Um, so this is going to be literally just a quick, it's actually a full dog that I've got here, but I'm just going to work on the head for this, the purpose of this quick tutorial. So I'm literally just going to, it's going to be more of a sketch as well. So I'm just going to come in here, this is um, Colourfix Smooth paper. So I'm just going to come in here with my colour pencils first of all. Just quickly going to pop in some highlight across the top of this dog's eye. As I say, the main focus is us getting to the pan pastel application. So I'm going to be quite quick here because the whole point of this tutorial is for me to just to show you how I use the pan pastels for. Um, underpainting. So see, normally I work on Claire Fontaine Pastel Matte. This is Art Spectrum Colour Fix Smooth. This is actually a pale, palish blue shade colour. Um, and I chose this black dog because cause I have taught it this one at quite a few of my workshops and I have got a full tutorial showing how to create him uh, wet and dry using watercolour pencils but the colours when I thought about oh subject I've actually got four black dogs myself and I thought oh, I'll draw one of those but to be honest this reference is perfect because it's got all of the colours that I wanted to depict from using the new set. So again, the set's perfect for black dogs, brown dogs, red hues, blue hues. Um, you'll need to mix them a little bit. There's a tint in there. You'll need to mix them a little bit if you're going to do a paler dog, but again, for a paler dog, you'd probably be using your pencils and then glazing. So literally I'm just using a handful of pencils here. Just to give the hint of an eye. to the actual dog itself. It's quite surprising how quickly you can just give that hint of the eye. Um, doesn't take much, get the highlight in the right place. Pampa stars, this paper and Pampa stars go together like magic. <laughs> no, they really are designed to work together. It feels so much smoother to the touch, and the pastels do glide on there, but you can rub out on this surface, whereas the pastel mat I don't tend to use. Um, the ability to rub out on there, um, this. It rubs out so much better on this colour fix smooth than if you were using uh, pastel matte um, I find then it could damage the tooth so we've got hints of the eyes in place so next we are going to come in just a little touch up there on that highlight a tiny touch just in the corner there oh 
obviously we take a lot more time if we were doing this uh, for an actual portrait. So we're going to move on to the pastel work next. Okay, so I'm going to pop the, um, the reference photo just up here to one side. I'll crop into the head as well, because like I say it is a full body. And then you'll get a hint of some of the colours I'm popping down. So I've got my palette here. Um, and I'm going to be using mostly the oval tool, but I do have the rounded um, soft knife there as well. Because we're working on smaller details, I'm not going to be using any of the big sponges for this one. And I've also got just some... Uh, kitchen roll just off to one side to clean off my brush. My brush? My tool. <laughs> okay so I'm going to go in first of all with my ultramarine blue extra dark. And everywhere that I can see, all I'm doing is literally just a little sweep to pick up some of the pigment. Everywhere that I can see a hint of that blue, I'm just going to pop some of it in. And that's all it is, it's just looking um, play where you can see touches of colour and popping them in. And I say it just glides on here absolutely beautifully. And it gives such a painterly feel as well. Um, and it's your choice as whether you just leave it at the pan pastel painting or whether you come back in with your pencils like I normally do um, and just add in even more detail. I mean you can just keep going, keep going, keep going. So everywhere I can see a hint of this blue, I'm popping it in. I'm just flicking my eyes backwards and forwards to my reference photo at the same time. And people are like, oh, but it's a black dog. It's like, yep, there's so many colours in, in a black dog. We're going to be popping some reds in as well. And I've really simplified the ears down for the this project, just for this demo, because there's so much texture in these ears. And it is just a case, let's say, of looking where the colour is and popping it in. The first layer might look a little bit strange, a little bit disjointed because it is just, okay, because I'm starting with the blues, it's just quite patchy, but it will all come together. I'm even following the reference photo quite loosely. There's more to show you the application and really how I use it. So now I'm going to just clean off my tool a little bit, just wiping it off on some kitchen paper. And I'm going to move over now to the Payne's Grey, which again is quite a bluey shade. Um, just more grey in there. There's a very subtle difference between the two. And you'll see little bits of dust falling down and you'll get this whatever um, dry pigment you use on this paper. It's very smooth to the touch but as soon as you start putting pigment down that's when you start to see um, 
the grit, the grain of the um, paper showing through um, where it reveals itself so it is actually, as soon as you put pigment on there you start to feel a little sandy grittiness and it's the grittiness that grips your pan pastel so again I'm just using my reference photo pretty much as a guide sort of following it just using the edges of the tool as well so this is close as I've got to um, painting it's very much like using a paintbrush okay right so I'm going to move over now I'm going to put in some of my darks um, I think no, let's put in our yeah, let's put in our dark. So it's literally I'm going to go in with the black. So again, just a sweep, picking up the pigment, and now I just want to come in here, and get these lovely darks. This is what gives ex expression to the dog then. dark shadow, this is always the darkest part on animals, just where it goes into that shadow under the ear. Don't worry about all the little flicky hairs because I'm going to put those in with a pencil quite quickly near the end. If you need to intensify, just go back in with a little bit more. Again, lighter touch. Sink. If you sink away, if you get in your shadows first, if you get your shadows in underneath, it really sinks that neckline away and it makes the mouse pop forward. So you can see that, I need to make that darker, so I simply just go in and put another layer over the top. So get some weight and shadow into these ears now. the weight underneath the ears. I can come in over the top with some of our lights as well. <laughs> you see how quickly the effect of this happens.
with the other brow. Again, just getting that little outline there and bringing that up. Whilst I've caught only a hint of the black up on my, my knife now. Just darkening up some of those areas without pulling down too much. Let's texturise some of this over here. Very much the wind in his ears over on this side.
Okay, so there you can see where I've um, gone in and worked with pencils over on this side of the dog and where I've left it just as the pan pastel painting on this side. So again, it's quite loose and smooth over here and this is how much you can tighten it up. You can carry on. I've done this more as a, a sketch rather than a really detailed um, piece and I've just used five pencils there that, that match up with the underpainting colours of the pan pastels that I've used. Um, again, you could bring in some of the other colours, but this is just a really quick um, introduction demo to show how maybe I'd go about creating black fur using the pan pastels as an underpainting. I could go in over the top now if I wanted to and just, you know, sort of soften some of this up again. Um, I could come in as well with um, like a mono eraser. I could just come in and, yeah, you can actually sort of like erase some of this some of this back as well, take it right back to the actual paper. The possibilities are endless to be honest and I'm hoping you'll agree that the range that I've put together is perfect not just for this black dog but I'll do some more demos where I'll show you how to create a chestnut colour dog, um, brown dog, a, you know sort of like a brindle dog, you know sort of or even some wildlife animals. I've got a wolf, you know, um, this, these colours should give you a really, really good basic range um, to get going with. And then if you need to bring in the odd colour, you can do. So thank you very much for watching this. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something and I hope you enjoy my new range of pan pastels. Thank you.